When it comes to the history of Delhi Sultanate, we have all heard about Bakhtiyar Khilji, and we know that he destroyed Nalanda University. But about his early life, little is known. So in this video, I will talk about Bakhtiyar Khilji's early life, and we will see how he became an important commander in the armies of Delhi Sultanate. But before we talk about Bakhtiyar Khilji himself, let's just first talk about his tribe Khilji. or khilji as they were later called now when we look at the history of delhi sultanate during this period we see that these khiljis were considered different from the turks the turks were the ruling elite of delhi sultanate and these turks considered khiljis as belonging to a inferior race now this has to do with the fact that the khiljis came from afghanistan and these turks considered khiljis as afghans but that is not true because most scholars argue that the khiljis were of turkic origin and they entered into afghanistan around 4th century ad from the central asia region and we find that these khilji settled into the southern afghanistan region and what we see is that by the time of 10th century ad when sultan mahmud ghazni was invading india we find that most of the soldiers of sultan ghazni were from the khilji tribe and later we see that mohammad gauri also employed large number of khilji soldiers now coming back to bakhtiyar khilji we find that bakhtiyar khilji belonged to garmsir which is in southern afghanistan and according to minhaj us Siraj, who wrote Tabakate Nasiri, he tells us that Bakhtiyar Khilji wanted to become a soldier, so that is why he travelled to Ghazni. But he was rejected by the commander because the commander thought that Bakhtiyar Khilji was ugly, and that is why he rejected Bakhtiyar. And we find that uh, Tabakate Nasiri tells us that after getting rejected from Ghazni, Bakhtiyar travelled all the way to Delhi. again in order to become a soldier and we find that here again the same story repeats the commander rejects bakhtiyar khilji because he considers bakhtiyar khilji an ugly person so after having been rejected from first of ghazni and then delhi we see that bakhtiyar then goes to badayu in badayu bakhtiyar khilji finally gets a job as a soldier in the army of the governor of badayu and from this point onwards according to tabakate nasiri he bakhtiyar khilji went on to become a great military commander we find that the governor of badayu was so impressed by the military qualities of bakhtiyar khilji that he gave bakhtiyar khilji two iktas first was bhuli and second was bhagwat now these two regions according to modern scholars are in the region of southern mirzapur so we see that the southern mirzapur region became the base of bakhtiyar khilji now this is what tabakate nasiri tells us about the early life of bakhtiyar khilji but this is not the only source about bakhtiyar khilji's early life we have also futuh salatin this text futuh salatin was written by abdul malik isami and in it we find that there is a completely different story of the early life of bakhtiyar khilji futuh salatin tells us that after moving from afghanistan bakhtiyar khilji was employed by a rajput ruler whose name was jaising and he was from jitur now according to modern scholars particularly k nizami he argues that this jaising of jitur was probably the rajput ruler who belonged to the gohilot clan whose name was jaitra singh and this jaitra singh during this time ruled the region of nagada which is 70 km west of chittor now this is story is interesting because we know that rajput rulers employed afghans as mercenaries but i think that this story is not correct because futuh salatin is a later work it was composed in 14th century whereas the life of bakhtiyar khilji belonged to the period of late 12th century to early 13th century and that is why tabakate nasiri which is a earlier work has greater detail and it is also in my view 
authentic so that is why we will stick to the story that is being told in tabakat e nasiri now tabakat e nasiri tells us that finally sadan mirzapur becomes the center of bakhtiyar khilji and he establishes his base in this region now in this region as you will see in this map that this was the frontier of the delhi sultanate and there were two main objectives for bakhtiyar khilji first was to suppress the gadhwal chiefs now we all know that in 1193 in battle of chandavar the gadhwal king jaychand was defeated by the armies of delhi sultanate but that doesn't mean that the whole territory of the gadhwal firmly came under the rule of delhi sultanate we find that within this territory there were number of gadhwal chiefs who were continuously revolting so that is why we see that for bakhtiyar khilji his main objective was to suppress the revolting gadhwal chiefs and according to tabakat e nasiri bakhtiyar khilji was able to successfully suppress these gadhwal chiefs now as we have seen that bakhtiyar khilji's base was at the frontier of delhi so the second objective of bakhtiyar khilji was to expand the territory of delhi sultanate in the east when we look at the political map of this region we see that the territories of delhi sultanate extended up to the karbnasha river now the karbnasha river was the de facto border between the delhi sultanate and the region of bihar now about the region of bihar scholars are not very sure who ruled this territory and when we look at the history before the arrival of delhi sultanate some scholars argue that the senas had captured this region from the gadhwals but when it comes to this period we find that the sena authority in this region was quite negligible so the fact that east of the karbnasha river the authority of the senas was non existent meant that for bakhtiyar khilji this was the right opportunity and we find that bakhtiyar khilji went on to conduct raid after raid in the territory of bihar and in this raids we find that his main aim was to collect as much booty as possible and that is why we find that bakhtiyar khilji did not carry any siege trains and he did not also attack any forts for him the main aim was to acquire as much wealth as it was possible and also minimize his losses and because of this wealth we find that bakhtiyar khilji became quite famous and soldiers from different parts of the sultanate came to serve under him so gradually we see that bakhtiyar khilji had acquired fame as an able commander and the number of men who served under him has also increased now in these raids he also attacked the university of nalanda now one misconception which we have about nalanda is that we consider nalanda as a unprotected place but that was not true because nalanda was a university town and it had fortifications so what we see is that according to tabakat e nasiri that when uh, bakhtiyar khilji attacked this place this place was not defended properly and that is why bakhtiyar khilji was able to destroy the university of nalanda now after destroying the university of nalanda he went on to destroy the university of vikramshila as well and after destroying these two university he also attacked a third university town whose name was udantpur now udantpur according to modern scholars was in the present day bihar sharif and in udantpur we find that bakhtiyar khilji constructed a forward base in the form of a fort now the fact that bakhtiyar khilji was able to destroy these university towns and did not suffer any setbacks require some explanation in tabakat e nasiri we are told that bakhtiyar khilji attacked nalanda with only 200 men so why did bakhtiyar khilji was able to destroy this university town it did not suffer any setbacks so in order to answer this question we have to first remember that the territory of bihar was in a state of anarchy during this period as i have already told you that in this whole bihar territory there was no central authority 
And most of the time we have different references where we are told that these university towns did not have enough men to protect them. So because there was no protection available for these university towns, these university towns were lying defenseless and they were just waiting for the Turkish onslaught that came with the arrival of Bakhtiar Khilji. Now after destroying these university towns, as I have already told you that in Udantpur, Bakhtiar Khilji constructed a forward base and from this forward base he organized his future raids and in one of these raids we will see that Bakhtiar Khilji would conquer the capital of the Senas. But about this episode we would talk in a later video. Thank you for watching.